it's about multi-view clustering and in particular uh, deep neural networks and multi multi-view clustering uh, and we have some some uh, some important takes on this tendency to align representations uh, that are produced by encoders in uh, in the deep multi-view clustering models so so we'll uh, we'll look into uh, like how these models are put together and and the alignment thing so um, the outline is as follows uh, we'll go through like some introduction and background uh, and then I'll talk about the problems uh, that can occur when you uh, align these representations and then there's the two models that we present in the paper namely a simple multi-view clustering and contrasting multi-view clustering uh, and then finally some uh, some results with uh, with these models yeah so multi-view clustering uh, is uh, what it sounds like you have uh, instances or objects that are observed uh, through multiple views or uh, with multiple modalities or multiple sensors if you will so if you have for instance videos you have one sensor which gives you like a sequence of images and you have another sensor that gives you uh, audio so that's uh, like a two two view uh, data type um, so deep multi-view clustering is basically uh, like how how do you do multi-view clustering using deep learning um, so the standard sort of uh, the standard design pattern in this deep multi-view clustering is to take uh, the input views and then you encode them, encode them separately using uh, what we call view specific encoders so you basically have like one deep neural network for each view uh, and the output of these uh, view specific encoders is your the representation for for the view and then you take these representations from the different views and then you fuse them somehow so for instance with uh, a weighted average and then you can cluster these fuse representations with a clustering module for instance the deep divergence based clustering uh, to produce your cluster membership uh, vectors um, and then you can sort of back propagate gradients to train this whole thing uh, end to end uh, yeah and also there have been some some papers that uh, additionally reconstruct the original views from the fuse representations and then then they train the, the encoders the clustering module and also the decoder in that case with a reconstruction loss in addition to the to the clustering loss so that's it introduces uh, a, a pretext task for uh, for the fuse representation so uh, i guess it's been shown to help uh, in some cases yeah so the current sort of state of the art in uh, deep deep multi-view clustering is this end-to-end -end adversarial attention network for multimodal clustering uh, eamc for short so there they have the framework that i uh, that i highlighted in, on the previous slide uh, but not the reconstruction stuff uh, so, but in addition, they also align these uh, representation distributions. So each view gives you a distribution in the representation space. Uh, and then you align these distributions uh, using a discriminator and uh, an adversarial training. So, so you essentially want uh, the distributions from different views to be identical. So uh, they argue that this introduces another pretext task for the for the view specific encoders, uh, and that this task helps the network to learn better representations. Um, there's also the argument that you sort of you suppress information that's only present in one of the views, and you strengthen information that's present in all of in all views because you basically introduce this. Uh, 
almost like a view invariance in the representation space. Um, yeah. So uh, they also fuse these aligned representations with some weights produced by an attention network. So you have a small attention network uh, that that acts on the in the representation space space and outputs sort of the weights that you want to, or the weights for the linear combination that produce the fused uh, representation. And then they cluster this fused representation with uh, deep divergence-based clustering. So the model uh, looks like this. I've, I've uh, borrowed this figure from, from their paper. Um, so here you can see you have two modalities, X and Y, uh, modalities or, or views. And then you pass them through the encoder. So you have one encoder here and one encoder here. And then you get some latent representations. Um, and these are aligned with this adversarial module. Uh, and also they go into this small attention network that produces the weight for the fusion. And then you have the clustering module on the right here. So, uh, our main focus uh, with respect to this model is the sort of the adversarial alignment here and also how that impacts the, the attention network in this case. So the first sort of pitfall of attempting to align or aligning these distributions is that actually inhibits what we call view prioritization. Um, so you can think that if, if the distribution of views or if, yeah, if the representations of views are similar across all views, so you basically have the same representation for an object regardless of the view, does it make sense to prioritize between different views? Like, how do you even prioritize um, if, if uh, the representations are the same? So uh, for instance, this is problematic where one view is completely uninformative. So maybe all the clustering structure that you're looking for is present in one of the views and the other view is just random noise. Then you want to basically put all the emphasis on the informative view and just suppress or discard this uh, noisy, noisy view that doesn't give you anything. Um, but when you sort of naively try to align the representation distribution, you will essentially uh, attempt to align the informative uh, view to the noise. So you're basically just injecting noise into your into the representation of the informative view. So that will make it harder to actually identify the correct clusters because you've added noise essentially. Um, and yeah, we actually observed this in the EAMC model um, where we see that the fusion weights, so the weights produced by the, by the attention network are, are close to uniform, uh, even though we have one view which is much more informative than the other view. Uh, so EAMC in that case isn't really capable of view prioritization. Yeah, so the second point uh, is that one-to-one -one alignment of clusters. So now we assume that uh, these uh, distributions for each view are multimodal and that one mode uh, corresponds to a cluster, right? So one-to-one uh, -one alignment of clusters is only attainable when encoders can separate all clusters in all views. So it means that uh, basically if you have uh, the situation that this, uh, these plots illustrate where in one view you have, uh, it's not possible to separate the blue and the green cluster, but you can separate the red or you can isolate the red cluster. But in the second view, uh, you, can, you can see uh, all three clusters, uh, right? So in this case, you should be able to cluster the data by just by looking at view two. Uh, but if you align the data in this case, you will actually get, uh, you will actually not be able to separate between the blue and the green cluster because 
uh, you know, these encoders act as uh, functions, basically. So you can you can map two points to the same point, but you can't map one point to two different points, right? So it's possible to map blue and green together from view two, but it's not possible to separate between blue and green in view one. So that's why you, this uh, the alignment is sort of forced to accept the solution uh, where you mix together blue and green. Um, yeah. So in this case, uh, it would actually be better to just don't align and just look at view two uh, and discard view one. And then the third and sort of final pitfall uh, is that if you just if you just uh, align these modes without actually looking at sort of uh, which mode corresponds to which clusters and stuff, you can actually end up uh, misaligning the modes. So in this case, we're interested in separating stars and squares. And if we just overlap view one and view two, in this case, you actually see that uh, you get both stars and squares mixed together uh, in this aligned representation. And if your fusion weights are equal, you're not able to separate between stars and squares. And if they're unequal, it's it's still harder than if you just hadn't done the alignment at all. Yeah. So with these problems in mind, uh, we thought, like, what if we just drop the alignment? What if we just don't do it? Uh, and that's how this, <laughs> how this model was uh, was born. Uh, so it's just. You know, it's just the view specific encoders, a weighted average fusion, where we learn we learn the weights and we constrain them to be positive and some to one. Uh, and then the DDC clustering module. And then we train this end to end and it turns out to actually work almost as good as uh, like this current state of the art method and in some cases uh, even better. And it's, it's much simpler if you compare it to the EAMC, for instance. So, uh, but we recognize that uh, even though there are some problems with uh, the alignment, it's still it's still good to have sort of a, a pretext uh, a pretext task to help or an ad additional task to help the networks or the encoders learn. Uh, better representations that sort of capture more of the like the geometric structure of the input spaces uh, and stuff. So what we did was to include a contrastive learning component uh, to this uh, simple simple baseline model, and we use uh, so so what this does is to basically. Um, you know, because there's a very natural connection between contrastive learning and and multi-view learning, because these uh, these recent successful approaches in contrastive learning often rely on augmentations of uh, of data. So you have an image, for instance, and then you augment it to get another image, which is slightly different from the original image, and then you embed these two, and you want them to be be close together. Uh, while they simultaneously repel sort of uh, different views from other images. And in, in multi-view learning, we already have multiple views of uh, an instance. So we can just contrast these basically. So positive pairs are, are, um, are observations from different views, but of the same object. And negative pairs are observations of views uh, of different objects. So uh, yes, so we implement this contrastive loss using a cosine similarity. Uh, so it means that we align angles between views uh, of the same object, right? We don't align the, the objects them, or the uh, representations themselves because we use the cosine similarity. So we just try to embed them along the same line um, from, uh, through the origin. 
uh, and we do this at the sample level right so it's not it's it's not just distribution alignment it's actually per per sample uh, so by doing this you avoid the problem of uh, like so you can still prioritize views because you just embed them along the same line uh, and you avoid the problem of misaligned label distributions because you align them at the sample level. So you use this pairwise information to basically force uh, force the label distributions to be aligned as well. And then finally, we multiply this contrastive loss. So we we uh, we add it to the to the total clustering loss, but we multiply it with the smallest fusion weight. So that's just to uh, allow the contrastive learning to be sort of disabled by the by the network in the case that you have one view which is very uninformative um, so you like you have a view it's basically random noise the fusion weight for that noise is very small uh, so you disable the alignment altogether and that avoids uh, this problem of uh, where you yeah where you don't want to uh, what, what was it yeah, where you have one view which is just basically destroys uh, the other views, diffuse rep or diffuse representation. Uh, yes. So the clustering results are actually pretty pretty good. We get an improvement for almost all cases uh, for the contrasting model and uh, improvement on on uh, most cases, I think, for the for the simple model. So, uh, yep. Um, so I guess this experiment uh, kind of sums up sort of the problems with uh, with the alignment because in this case we have uh, a two view data set. So it's, uh, it's MNIST, but then you also have an edge detected version of MNIST and you basically, so that's your two views. Uh, and then we add uh, increasing amounts of noise to this edge view and observe what happens with, uh, with the fusion weight of the noisy view and also the accuracy as we train uh, EAMC, which is the current sort of state of the art, and the contrastive and the simple models. So for our models, we see that the fusion weight for the noisy view decreases. So you put uh, less and less emphasis on this noisy view as the noise increases. Uh, and, and we also observe that the accuracy remains high. Uh, so it's not that um, the negative impact of the noise isn't that big on the accuracy. Uh, but for EAMC, you can see that it, the fusion weight is still, is still pretty, uh, Pretty high, even though the noise is uh, the noise is big, um, uh, so the accuracy decays uh, accordingly because you have more and more noise, and you're not capable of uh, deprioritizing this uh, this noisy view. Uh, yeah. So finally, some uh, some plots for this case. So the the top top row of plots is the is the case where you don't have any noise so you can see that the the representations are actually aligned in this case not not just uh, uh, sort of it's not just the angles but it's actually the representations themselves that are that overlap uh, and we get pretty nice uh, like a nice separable representation after we fuse we fuse uh, the the views. Um, so this is for uh, the contrastive model, these two or these four plots. And so the bottom row, uh, that's when we have maximum amount of noise in uh, view two. So you can see before fusion, the orange is just uh, like a big blob, not really possible to find any digits. Um, but because of the low fusion weight, we're actually able to find uh, or to separate the digits after fusion because this uh, this orange blob is essentially 
uh, essentially has zero weight uh, because the model has learned to to discard the noisy view. Yep. So uh, to summarize, we've uh, we've shed some light on possible problems with distribution alignment in deep multi-view clustering, uh, and also we've developed two new methods that are able to circumvent these uh, these problems.